Let's give Sister Minister Ava Muhammad another hand. Please. In the name of Allah, the Beneficent, the Merciful. All praise is due to Allah, the Lord of all the world. Right. We forever thank Almighty God, Allah, for raising up in our midst the black man yeah. and the black woman, yeah. a very much needed divine leader, teacher, and guide in the person of the most honorable Elijah Muhammad. Yeah. And if we live to be a thousand years, or if we live to be the age of Methuselah, we will forever and be eternally grateful to Almighty God, Allah, and His man that He has placed in our midst, His divine servant, for putting their hands on one, binding one, shaping him, molding him, and preparing him, and fashioning him for the time in which we have now arrived, at the time of the black world's rise and the white world's demise. I greet you in our radio listening audience and I greet you here at the Final Call Administration Building with the greeting words of peace. Assalamu alaikum. We have been greatly inspired and greatly welcomed, warmly welcomed. The pace has been set by not just Sister Ava Muhammad but by our sister minister by our attorney, by our lawyer, by our chief counsel, and as you could see, by a teacher who has come before you. We are talking today on the subject of South Africa, but we can't talk about South Africa unless we talk about America. For it is written in the scripture, all praise is due to Allah. South Africa is the baby of America. P.W. Botha is a baby devil, and Ronald Reagan is the big daddy devil. All praise is due to Allah. And so, and so it is written in the book of John in the 8th chapter, talking about P.W. Botha. It says that you are of your father the devil, and the lust of your father you will do, because he was a murderer from the beginning. He abode not in the truth, because there is no truth in him. When he speaketh a lie, he speaketh of his own, for he is a liar and the father of the lie. What is all of the marching on South Africa for? Yes, South Africa is the devil's den, but America is Shaitan al-Akbar. America is the big devil. We have lessons from the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, student enrollment. It says, rules of Islam, the following questions must be answered. Not if you get around to it, but the following questions must be answered. 100% before submittance of student to said lesson number one. And so the first question opens up, who is? the original man. And the answer is given that the original man is the Asiatic black man. That he's the maker. He's the owner. He's the cream of the planet Earth. He's father of civilization. God of the universe. All praise is due to Allah. Farther down the line, the question is asked, what is the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America and all over the planet Earth? At that time, in the 30s, the answer was given, the population of the original nation in the wilderness of North America is 17 million, with the 2 million Indians, makes it 19 million. All over the planet Earth is 4 billion, 400 million. Now why does the God give his student and his messenger and his Christ that he would make the savior to the black world? Why does he give him these two questions? For it is written in the Bible, we understand why the question is asked, who is the original man? We know why Margaret Mead and Toynbee and all of the boys, Leakey, Richard Leakey and LSB Leakey and all of the others with leaks in their scholarship. We know why they went in search of the original man. We know why they didn't go to Europe. We know why they didn't go to the islands. 
We know why they went into Africa and found a man that they call Gingenthropolis. Meaning in translation, black man. They had the remains of this man represented over 1,750,000 years of existence on our planet. But they went back and found that even he had a daddy. Found the remains of another black man over two million years of existence on our planet. But found out that even he had a black man. So as they dig and search and research, they cannot find the origin of the original black man and woman because we are without father or mother. We are from everlasting to everlasting. All, all praise is due to Allah. No beginning, no ending. All they can say is he was, he is, and he shall be. Before him there were none, and after him there will be no more. So everybody wants to know who the original man is. Because we've got to find that original man because the book says, as it was in the beginning, so shall it be in the ending. Whoever was ruling in the beginning is supposed to be ruling in the end. Whoever was the landlord of 196,940,000 square miles of the planet Earth, whoever was the landlord 76 quintillion miles throughout the distance of the diameter of the universe, whoever the original man was, is to be the landlord in the end. So the question is, is there even a question? <laughs> the question is, how could some criminal colonial settler colony crackers Take some land from the black man and then talk about negotiation. How could you, hypocritical black people in America, march with straggly, wimpy peck of words up and down the street talking about one man, one vote? What in the hell do you mean, one man, one vote? P.W. Botha has no vote. South African white folks have no vote. If you will go anywhere on the face of the planet Earth, the white man is not an original man. He's not called a native nowhere. Even Europe is not his homeland. We go into J.A. Rogers and other scholars, and we go way back to a people called the Grimaldis. And we find out that the Grimaldis are among the people who are the descendants of the original people who inhabit the place that is called Europe today. So the white man is not even an original European. He's not a native nowhere you go. He's the only one who is called an odd fellow. He's an odd fellow. And he goes all over the world starting trouble, making trouble everywhere he goes. So South Africa is not his home. But he gets it from America. Have you forgotten? You didn't come on the Nina, the Pinta, nor the Santa Maria in the radio listening audience, nor those who are here today. Come on, brother, brother. You didn't land at Plymouth Rock on the Mayflower. No, you didn't. You may eat more pumpkin pie, yeah. eat more turkey and dressing, drink more red soda water and barbecue than the white man on Thanksgiving and Fourth of July, but that's exactly what it is. It's a Jew's lie. You didn't arrive. All oh, praise is due to our Lord. All praise is due to Allah. You did not arrive at that time. You were brought in the holes of ships. We were stacked and packed like sardines in a can and like cockroaches in a Coke bottle. That's the way we came. We came with no dignity. We came with no pride. Over 250 million of us, you can find our bones today bleached on the floor of the ocean in what is called the middle passage. Have you forgotten that once we were brought here, we were robbed of our names, robbed of our language, robbed of our religion, our culture, our God. We lost our folkways, our mores. We lost our norms. And many of us, by the way we act, we even lost our minds. All praise to We 
were drowned in the lakes, the rivers, the brooks, and the streams. We were, as Bessie Smith used to say, the trees in the south had a strange fruit with blood at the root. Strange fruit. A black man or a black woman hanging from the tree. Strange fruit with blood dripping at the root. Take a pregnant black woman, nine months pregnant, cut her open, snatch the unborn baby for her from her, throw it to the ground and crush it with his wicked boot heel. Take pregnant black women and tie horses or oxen or cows to both legs, beat them until they ran in opposite directions to snatch her and tear her and rip her apart. Take the black man, cut the black man's male genital organs off, Cut his fingers off, cut his tongue out, take his eyeballs out, put it in a pickle jar, set it on the trading post general store counter and put an inscription on it saying this is what happens to a nigger who bucks a white man. I remember Max Park. I remember Emmett Till. I remember the Scottsboro boys. I remember Rosa Parks sitting down on the front seat of the bus down south and a peck of wood getting on the bus telling her to move to the back bus driver saying let this gentleman have your seat i remember rosa parks having the heart to sit there i remember a young man 27 years old named martin luther king who took up the mantle and used that as the actual trigger that would set in motion a revolution in what has been known as the civil rights struggle I remember Daisy Bates and the Little Rock Nine. Do you remember Daisy? Do you remember the Little Rock Nine? Do you remember the arrogant Governor Forbes? Not some crackpot parking lot peck of wood, but Forbes was the governor. Forbes called out the National Guard troops to protect Central High School against what he called these nine niggas. I remember little sister Elizabeth, not 15, not 16 years old, who stepped up to the door to enter Central High School. And she gives the account that the National Guard troop, uh, troopman took his bayonet and stuck it toward her chest, ready to run her through. I remember that she said all of them took their bayonets and turned them toward her as she stepped toward the door of Central High School. Brothers and sisters, have you forgotten? Why is it that you're always ready to put on your cheerleader skirt, to pick up your shaker and rah, rah, rah for what you perceive as a struggle on a distant shore? When America... As we said at the South African rally yesterday, America is the head of the snake. South Africa and Israel are just tails of the snake. When you cut the head off, America off, the tail that is wrapped around Israel, so-called Israel and so-called South Africa and the rest of the world has no grip, has no power, no staying power. You're right here with the head of the snake. Our brothers and sisters on distant shores and who are struggling on foreign soil, they want to know when you're going to stand up. They want to know when we are going to stand up and make a definitive stand. They want to know when we are going to declare self-determination. They want to know when we are going to declare that we here in this strategic position, tap dancing on the tongue of the rattlesnake with the poison sack of venom under his tongue. They want to know when we are going to take the sack out Cut his tongue out and take his head. They want to know that. All praise is due to Allah. Marches are not going to free our people. You can't march your way to freedom, fool. How you going to march to freedom? You can't rally your way to freedom, fool. How you going to rally your way to freedom? Well, if we could, if, if, if we, if, if, well, if, 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 if we could just get enough folks registered up to, 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 to vote. Oh, you can't vote your way to freedom. No paper legislation can free you. I read brothers, the Indians have a string of paper that would wrap around America several times. 
all kind of paper and treaties with this devious, de scheming, conniving, ruthless, underhanded, devious devil. And he has denied that he even, most cases, signed them and is denying the circumstances or the conditions around which he signed them if he admits he signed them. The treaties ain't worth the paper that they were written on or the skin that they were written on, however they were written. This country has two laws. It has the written law and the unwritten law. And the written law is not as powerful. The unwritten law is far more powerful than the written law. Written law say you can live anywhere you want to. Unwritten law say, nigga, if you do. <laughs> Written law say that you can be whatever you want to be. You want to be president? You can be president. Unwritten law say, nigga, if you got a friend that we don't like, not only won't we let you be president, nigga, we won't even let you speak at the convention unless you deny him repudiate him and apologize to us and tell us all oh, praise you to our Lord. Any resemblance any resemblance to any persons living or dead is not a coincidence. The names were hidden and concealed to protect the guilty. We're talking about the USA and the USA. One is the United States of America and one is the Union of South Africa. The USA and the USA. Huh? Yeah. Both of them. You can't talk about one without talking about the other. You can't be against one without being against the other. But these weak need politicians, these spineless entertainers, who want to tiptoe in front of the embassy, get arrested at the embassy, get their picture in the paper, in the magazine, on the TV. But when a black man like the Honorable Louis Farrakhan Muhammad stands up and challenges the very root of racism, the root of imperialism, the root of Zionism, the root of apartheid. They don't want no part of that. They get away from it. They want to point at South Africa. Or they want to sing, we are the world. We are the children. Send some money to Ethiopia. That's our brothers and sisters in Ethiopia. And we are duty bound to help them. But what about our brothers and sisters in Cabrini Green? What about our brothers and sisters in Stateway Gardens? What about our brothers and sisters in Robert Tell? What about our brothers and sisters in Harlem? What about our brothers and sisters in Watts? What about our brothers and sisters in the Fillmore District? What about our brothers and sisters in ghettos and reservations all around the White House? in Washington, D.C. We're talking today about taking a powerful and a strong stand. Everybody all over the earth is beginning to stand up. One part of the planet, the battle cry is a loot to continue. A loot to continue, the struggle continues. Another part of the planet, the battle cry is Pumbere, Pumbere Nachimuranga. Pumbere and Achimaranga, on with the struggle. Get the struggle on, and victory is certain. Another part of the planet, the battle cry, is Uhuru. Uhuru Sasa. Uhuru Sasa. Freedom. Freedom now. Another part of the planet, the battle cry, is Allah. Allahu Akbar. No power, no force. No combination of powers or forces. I bow only to God himself. In another part of the planet, all praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. In another part of the planet, the battle cry is Kadima. Kadima Yahumila. Kadima Yahumila. That we're going straight ahead. 
is forward. Come what may, we're going with God no matter what gets in the way. Kadima, Kadima, Yahumila. Another part of the planet, the better cry is for whatever, for whatever, backward never, backward never, for whatever. So the question is, when will you join the liberation struggle of the world? When will you put down your cheerleader skirt and your shaker and your pom-poms and get into the real deal? You're on the front line. These states are the front line states. These are the front line states. Not over there. We're calling also for all of the African heads of state, the African heads of government, to drop their petty differences. All of the presidents throughout Africa, drop their disputes. Sit down at the bargaining table. Get rid of the disputes that came up when the criminal settler colonialist powers and white masters were there and we're still carrying on those disputes today and then put all of the army the navies the air forces the marine corps in battle formation train them up now train them up in kenya train them in uganda train them in mozambique and angola train them in senegal train them in the gambia Train them all over in Niger and Nigeria. Train them all over Africa. Train them in Chad. Train them in the Sudan. Train them all over Africa and form a continental army. And by air, by land, and by sea, move on P.W. Botha and the South African illegitimate government. If a continental army were formed in all of the nations of Africa, as Osaji, Fokwami, and Krumah envisioned one Africa, if this is the trigger, if this is the shot that will be heard and ring throughout, that will be the rallying cry for all of Africa to come together. Those Africans at home, those in the diaspora, those abroad. But if our brothers and sisters the 30 million inside of so-called South Africa, a Zanya, would stand up and a continental army is formed. And the move is made from the outside. And the move is made from the inside. There would be no more South Africa. I am not one who is for compromise. There is no compromise with the devil. The scriptures say reject the devil. Resist the devil. And he will flee from you. Taught by the Honorable Elijah Muhammad to fear no one or nothing. Nothing that ever was, ever was, is, or ever would be that we are supposed to fear. We are to fear God and only God. That force should be formed on the African continent. And then the move should be made. Again, there is no compromise with South Africa. We don't want them to do our brothers and sisters in so-called South Africa the way they've done us. They put us to sleep. There's no more struggle. No more talk of nationhood. It's our hospitals, our banks, our supermarkets, our presidents, our astronauts. Well, you out of your mind. And you can't even say our mind anymore. He's taken everything. Been robbed completely. We have sitting here with us today, I say this to our radio audience and those who are here. We have three of the princes, the great and mighty Nazis of the original African Hebrew Israelite nation headquartered in Jerusalem. We know that our brother, the international ambassador and prince, Asiel ben Israel, our friend, our ally, and our comrade in the struggle, our brother in God and in the black nation and black family, is being held by some criminals on some trumped-up charges. This criminal enterprise.
called the United States government. This criminal enterprise with corporations, multinational, blood-sucking corporations that support illegitimate governments and managed as they support the illegitimate government to suck the blood of the people at the same time. It's a criminal enterprise called the USA. These criminals, this criminal, criminal justice system, this criminal, criminal justice system is holding our brother, Nasi Asiel bin Israel. We put up thousands, hundreds of thousands of dollars in property, more than they asked for, and they still held it. Don't even really have good, sound reason even in their own mind and heart. Our brothers are here today, Nasi El Kanan, and the uh, Prince of War, Nasi Omishadai, our brother Nasi Kiskiahu. The three of them are here with us today, and we're going to join the forces. We've been raising money all over the city. We raised some yesterday at the South African rally. We've been raising at fundraisers all throughout the city, day and night, raising up the money. Cracker wants the money. With some more dead crackers on the paper, we render unto Caesar what is Caesar. We give him the cracker paper back. Because they got good presidents on the paper. Because they're dead presidents. We give it back to them. But we want our brothers to know from the original African Hebrew Israelite nation that we intend to join forces with everyone and continue and increase our support toward raising this defense money. It's not just defense money, but we know the hardship that the devil can bring against babies and children and women when he strikes this way. And we have to do it because he's coming after us next. He's planning every day. And we have chosen our side already. We're on God's side. We live in a time when might does not make right. And we live in a time when right makes might. And we being right in our struggle. Our struggle being just with our brothers and sisters and comrades of the black Hebrews and of other major revolutionaries. The New York Eight and Asada Shakur and Geronimo Pratt and many of the others. I remember all of them. And I'm sure you do. Our struggle being right. We have the might of the Lord of the worlds and the sovereign of the universe on our side. You can jail Prince Asiel. You can even jail Minister Farrakhan if it's the will of Allah. You can keep Brother Nelson Mandela locked up if you want to. But the folks on the streets got to say it. The folks on the street say, what goes around, comes around. Yeah. Folks on the street say, yeah. folks on the street say, trouble don't last always. Yeah. Folks on the streets are also saying from the scripture, as thou hast done, so shall it be done unto you. Yeah. Another part of the scripture says, as you have delighted in taking our blood, you will be given your own blood to drink like water. Another scripture said, whatsoever man soweth, say don't worry about it, that shall he also reap. Another scripture says, you are my battle axes and weapons of war. With you, I will break down and destroy nations and kingdoms. War is not coming. War is here. War is here. We're in the midst of war now. They're killing us here in America, and they're killing us in South Africa. They've killed more of us here than they have even dreamed of killing in South Africa. But we don't sympathize with our brothers and sisters in South Africa. ...sympathize with them because they're flesh of our flesh, blood of our blood, bone of our bone. In fact, they are we. And so the scripture goes on to say, He that stealeth a man and selleth that man, and if he be caught with that man in his hands, he shall surely be put to death. Goes on to say that he that curseth or killeth his mother and father 
shall surely be put to death. Exodus 21 and 17. The black people of South Africa, the indigenous people, the original people, they are the mother and father of P.W. Bolter. They are the mother and father of all of the Afrikaners and others who are there. Their mother and father. We are the mother and father of Ronald Reagan. Right. And the whites who oppress us right. here in America. The mother and father of the illegitimate folks who inhabit the land that is called Israel today. That's right. The book says there is a penalty. A serious penalty. And they were warned to honor their mother and father. And they were told that their days may be long upon the land which the Lord thy God had given them. But they have not honored their mother and father. Book says, He that leads into captivity shall go into captivity. He that lives by the sword shall perish or die by the sword. Yes, South Africa, as it is called, a Zanya, is going to be free. Ian Smith didn't want to give up so called Rhodesia, but now it's Zimbabwe. War and revolution is sweeping the world. You can jail the revolutionary, but you can't jail the revolution. Revolution is complete constructive change. Revolution is no more status quo. Revolution is no more going along with what's been going on. Revolution is either you stop or you drop. The people are not going to continue to accept the abuse and the misuse, the repression and the oppression. Revolution means before the people were at a standstill, but now the people will begin to move at will. Revolution means that a divine light is present among the people. For the scripture says the people who have walked in darkness would see a great light and they would begin to rise and shine when that light would come. Brothers and sisters, we are in the midst of world change, world revolution, and old order is being swept out with a great noise, and we are witnessing hell erupting, the bursting asunder. We are witnessing it, but we must participate. We must not be a footnote or a margin in history. We cannot be a footnote or a margin in history. We must be right there making history we must be in the midst of it shaping our own destiny you black man and woman have a divine rendezvous with destiny and God has found one worthy in your midst and raised up one who is a fit guide a fit leader a fit teacher who is a general who is a businessman who is a warrior who is a minister who is a servant and who is shaped and imbued after the very spirit and power of the God himself. He is called the anointed one. And the book says that you should not make him angry. We are living at the time of the changing of worlds. We are blessed to be in this time. Are we going to have to fight? Yes, we're going to have to fight. But the difference is we have a God on our side. The book says when God is for you, who can be against you? Our coming together, Jesus said, the stone that the builders rejected is now becoming the headstone of the corner. But there is a process that must take place. That that God intends to use is that that he takes through the greatest of trial, tribulation. The scripture says that he constantly has us on the anvil and in the fire. Puts us on the anvil and shapes us and dips us back in the fire and melts us down and breaks down the whole form and puts us back on the anvil and hammers us and shapes us and puts us back in the fire. Yes, we are being shaped for a divine destiny. A divine rendezvous with destiny. This is our day. And our hour, God intends to use us as the cornerstone for his new world government 
And that hour is now. That time is now. And for those of you who are in our radio listening audience, if you want a copy of today's tape, please call us at 994-5775, 994-5775. We're meeting here at 734 West 79th Street at the Final Call Administration Building. The principal speaker of this radio broadcast is the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad, whose return to this microphone is anxiously awaited and expected in the near future. To him, Sister Ava Muhammad, Sister Minister Ava Muhammad and I are deeply grateful and highly honored for him granting us this great privilege and opportunity once again to represent the message of his father, the Honorable Elijah Muhammad, to we, their beloved people. Brothers and sisters in our radio listening audience, Minister Farrakhan will be with us on next Sunday at 1 p.m. You should get here around 12 noon or start coming at 11.30. He is now in the holy city of Mecca. For those who are critics who say he's not a true Muslim, the Muslim world doesn't respect him. It was the king of Saudi Arabia. It was the head of the Rabata of Islamia, the World Muslim League, who invited him and his delegation, said, come over, Minister Farrakhan. We want you to come and make Hajj, make pilgrimage in the holy city Mecca. What is this saying? This is the God answering the babbling idiots. This is God answering those who are called heathens in the scripture, who rave and imagine vain things. This is the God answering them, saying, this is my anointed. Every time you attempt to slap him, I dip him in and bring him out, shining and sterling in his brilliance before the world. All praise is due to Allah. All praise is due to Allah. Uh, well, by Allah's grace and permission and his divine providence, I guess it's just perfectly crystally clear that Sister Ava and I came to teach today. <laughs> All praise is due to Allah. Those of you who are here visiting with us, as Brother Benny Muhammad has said to you and Sister Ava and I feel very strongly also, on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad, we welcome you to the Final Call Administration Building. We say seeing you brings us much peace. And when we see you, it warms our heart. We want you to know that you are among your own kind. Right, right, right. This is family. Right. Same dog that bit you, bit us too. <laughs> We're one. Forget about labels and banners and I'm a Methodist and I'm a Baptist and I'm a Catholic and I'm a Holy Roller and I'm a Muslim and I'm a Hebrew and I'm Church of God under Christ. I'm Church of God over Christ. I'm Church of God around Christ. I'm Church of God through Christ. I'm Church of God no Christ. I'm just, forget about all of that stuff. We are the divine chosen people of God. And if we are anything, if you understood it, we are everything that I just said. Yes. We are all of that when you understand it. And sometime we're going to go into that and teach how we are all of that. These are just adjectives that describe us. All of us. We're one people. I've heard Minister Farrakhan say that the Honorable Elijah Muhammad told him that sometimes we don't have as much sense as a wino. <laughs> Winos standing around getting their nickels and dimes and pennies together. Winos don't argue over the label on the bottle. Winos want to know what is the content? What's in the bottle? What's in the bottle? Once the wino know that it's wine in the bottle, the hell with the label when you get through with the content throw the bottle away 
Forget the label. Let's get some swigs off of the content. And they go, gurgle, 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 gurgle. That's what we got to do. We got to drink from the same fountain. Drink from the same fountain of wisdom. And drop our banners. Drop our labels. De-emphasize banner and labels. For this is the time for the dry bones to come together. And as Sister Ava Muhammad, Sister Minister Ava Muhammad said, we need an army. Ezekiel 37 said not only would the dry bones come together, but they would come together. Most preachers don't preach this. So I have to say quiet is just kept. Ezekiel 37 didn't just say they would shake and prophesied too and then the wind would blow on them hard times revolution loss of life diminution of fruit property everything that all of this would happen to them but it says after all of that after the period of trial and tribulation that would bring them together they would stand up an exceedingly great and powerful army of people didn't say they would just be an army but it said they would be an exceedingly great and powerful or mighty army of people. This is that hour. This is that time. Song you used to sing in the church. On the battlefield for, the, for my Lord. For my Lord. Well, you got to get on the battlefield. Huh? Holding up the blood stained banner. You got to pick it up and stop dragging it on the ground. Huh? That you soldiers for your Lord. For your Lord. Huh? Onward Christian soldiers. They ain't marching as to war. We show sure enough marching in the war. But can you imagine a fighter? Larry Holmes, world's heavyweight champion. Can you imagine him stepping in the ring already knowing that the victory is assured that all he got to do is put on the gloves and get in the ring? That's the way the prophecy of Bible and Quran tells us that all we got to do is just love each other, unite, stand up and fight, and the victory is certain. It's already prophesied to us. All we got to do is just put on the gloves and get in the ring and go a few rounds. That's all we got to do. We guarantee the knockout. Guaranteed to be the world's heavyweight champion. Heavyweight champions of wisdom. The God has already promised us that. All we got to do is stand up. So we are honored and happy to have you with us today. We won't hold you. This is Sunday afternoon and many things that you'd like to do with your family. Sister Ava and I would like to go till sundown. Then you'd be calling us the sundown kids. <laughs> What you calling me the sundown kid? I know you, Sister Minister Ava, don't want you calling her the sundown kid. So we're gonna let you go before the sun go down. So you won't give us no nicknames. You won't tell us, you'll be whispering. Say, oh Lord, say, who teach you next Sunday? Says the sundown kid. <laughs> or either if it's both of us, you say we got both of the gunslingers, it's both of the sundown kid. They're gonna keep us here all night long. How many of you are here for your first time? Would you please hold your hand up? Right. First time. <laughs> Those of you who are here for your first time, please believe that you are welcome. Brothers and sisters, find out who our brothers and sisters are who are here for their first time. Make them welcome. You know, share refreshments with them and brotherhood and sisterhood with them. Go to them. Seek them out. Make sure that they know that they are at home. That the place that they've been looking for that they have found. Whether it is your first time, second time, third time, it makes no difference. How many of you who believe what you heard today is the truth and good for black people? How many believe that first? You believe it's the truth? Good for black people. Hold your hands up. Hands down. How many of you don't believe it's the truth? Raise your lying hand. <laughs> Those who don't believe it's the truth. Well, how many, whether you, you don't know whether you believe it's the truth, 
You don't know whether it's a lie. You don't know what you believe. Raise your hand. See, ain't nobody here like that. That's the people who didn't come. <laughs> whether it's your first time, second time, third time, no matter how many times, but you have not yet accepted this truth. You have not yet decided to take a stand beside Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad to help him to get this truth to the rest of our people before it's too late. How many of you would like to unite with Minister Farrakhan, help him get this truth to the rest of our people before it's too late? Would you stand? Would you stand right where you are if you'd like to help? You believe it's the truth, you'd like to help. Stand, please, right where you are. Right where you are. I would like for Sister Minister Ava Muhammad to stand with me and the two of us to greet you on behalf of the Honorable Minister Louis Farrakhan Muhammad. Would you please just come right around? We would like the, the, the honor of shaking your hand on his behalf. Sisters as well as brothers right down the center aisle right here. God bless you. God bless you, sir. God bless you, sir. Come on, young man. <laughs> Here you are. Look at you, God bless you, brother. God bless you, sir. <laughs> Brothers and sisters, what you have witnessed in Sister Minister Ava Muhammad and myself and Brother Benny Muhammad, and what you have just witnessed represents the resurrection of the dead. The oh, some more. Come right on down. The tombstones are being broken apart and the dead is standing up in the grave. We are examples of that as well as all of us. The resurrection of the dead. <laughs> Scripture says the harvest is ripe, but the laborers are few. There are many of our people out there who would stand up immediately. We have to organize and unite and go out into the highways and to the byways and get the people. Brothers and sisters, on behalf of Sister Minister Ava Muhammad and myself, we thank you for your kind attention. And we do hope that in some positive and in some meaningful way, that by Allah's grace and permission, we have said something that will be of benefit to you and that will be of value to you and will further enrich and enhance your lives as you move toward your divine destiny that God has planned for us. At this time we would like for our secretary staff to come forward quickly with the charity or donation buckets. Brothers and sisters, we are going on a special outing in the next few minutes. We are going to see the play Diary of Black Men. And any sisters that would like to go with us, it's at the Ivanhoe Theater on Wellington and Halstead, between Halstead and Clark on Wellington, on far north side, right on Wellington between Halstead and Clark on the north side at the Ivanhoe Theater. We're going to the three o'clock matinee. 